Hi, I'm Jasper and this is how you animate terror birds and other bird-like creatures in Blender. Terror birds are an extinct species of giant flightless bird that lived in South America a few million years ago. They were giant, they could grow up to 2 to 3 meters tall and were the top predator for a while until they were eventually hunted to extinction by humans and other factors. I'm making an upcoming short film about terror birds in which farmers accidentally breed giant killer pheasants or terror birds which then exact revenge in gruesome ways. So for this I needed a terror bird model. I've sculpted a terror bird model before but it was pretty rubbish and for this I needed a whole new one. I'm actually making a whole breakdown and tutorial on actually how to make the terror bird in another video. For this video I'm just doing the animation. You can find my terror bird model on Sketchfabgum with the link in the description if you'd like to follow along, although I do encourage you to make your own. I rigged up the terror bird using a very basic IK rig, controlling the head, legs and main body. I've actually found a really nifty technique to getting the bird head movements quite accurate and this is how I do it. Bird heads are remarkably gyroscopic, it's amazing how they can stay still while the body moves around. You can just about get this effect when you move the control bone for the head up and down and forwards and backwards. However, as you can see, the head is pivoting from the beak and is being controlled from the beak, which doesn't seem very realistic because birds are moving their heads based on their neck muscles. To create this effect, select the IK bone and tick Rotation in the IK properties. This will then make the head rotate really weirdly, but rotate the IK control bone until the head looks normal. Now, as you can see, when you move the IK control bone, the head stays in place without any unwanted rotation and stuff. Now, when you move the head via the control bone, the head remains perfectly in place without rotating or creating unrealistic effects. It's very subtle, but I found that it really improves the accuracy of the whole thing. Animating the terror bird's eyeballs is really simple too. Simply create a plane, add a few subdivisions and then add a shrink wrap modifier to this. You can also add a thickness modifier as well on top of that and perhaps even a subdivision surface. You can animate this using shape keys. Add a base shape key and another shape key, then go into edit mode and move the plane until it completely covers the eyeball or as if the eyes are closed. You can now control the eyes opening and closing by controlling a value from 0 to 1 and keyframing that. Also make sure to parent the eyes and the eyelids to the existing armature so it all stays in place when you move it around. Little things like eyelids and blinking really adds to the realism of the whole thing. You can experiment more with shape keys by adding breathing or little swallowings and other things that I find really add to it and it's quite fun actually. When birds move their head, they move their heads in very short snappy increments like this. Add a base keyframe, then move a few frames and then rotate the head to where you want it to be. This effect does work and it looks very snappy, although I find it looks very robotic. One way to counter this and make this look more natural is to then move a few frames more, move 10 to 15 frames forwards, and then add another keyframe of the head moved ever so slightly in one direction or the other. This mimics the energy dissipating as the head snaps from one place to the other, as in reality it wouldn't just be a complete start to stop, there would be a gentle and then going, then stopping. It's very subtle, but I, it really does give it a more lifelike and less robotic sense. Animating walking is really hard, I'm not going to pretend like it's not, although this is my trick to getting around it, although I must admit, it's not perfect. I start off by moving the base body bone of 20 frames forward or so. This will determine the pace at which the terror bird moves forward. Also, make sure you begin with the legs slightly apart from each other as if they've been walking already, it just helps really. Carefully and painstakingly add keyframes where necessary. When moving the back leg, make sure that when it intersects with the front leg, the front leg is directly underneath the main body as it's able to support its weight. Then move a few frames afterwards and then have it placing the foot on the ground. It really isn't too difficult as the IK rigs really do help and also don't worry about the toes for now. I know they look really bad, but just make sure you've got the basic walk cycle down and you're happy with it before you can move into the finer details of the toe rotation. Once you're happy with the walk cycle, spend some time getting the toe animation right. It's very time consuming and a bit rubbish because the IK rigs also make the toes in often intersect and clip with the ground so you constantly have to adjust that by adding more rotation keyframes. When the foot lifts off the ground, you want the toes to try and stay on the ground for as long as possible so they properly give it a nice roll. And the same with it, when it comes down, you want it to, the toes to touch the ground first and then as it comes down, it presses the other things. Birds often splay their toes when they touch the ground and then clench them back up when they're in the air. That's a little very subtle detail but it really adds to the realism of the whole thing. Also, think about how the weight shifts from one leg to the other as it walks across. It really helps sell the size of the animal that you're trying to go for, especially as a terror bird is a really big chicken. Looking at real life video reference is absolutely invaluable for you as an animator. It really helps get everything down. 
If I find a video that works for me, I'll often download it, then bring it into Blender using an images as planes or set it as a reference in the background. I can then use this to match move each tiny incremental move of the animal and copy it to my existing, or rather non-existing animal. I did this a few months ago with a small compi model I made. I match moved it perfectly with a sparrow footage and it actually ended up looking really quite good. This type of perfectly match move in the animation is very specific to the circumstances. It won't work for everything you're trying to do, especially if you're trying to tell, tell a story. Often the bird or reference simply won't do the thing that you wanted to do. Uh, for example, if you want a terror bird attacking oh, and eating pheasant. someone's hand. Do you mind if I uh, pet you? You've got a very magnificent bill. Ow! Don't do that again, mate, please. You're quite handsome there. In that case, it's really good just to use the reference as a rough guy. Although, if the circumstances allow it, I really do recommend copying each tiny incremental move. It will really level up your animation. And it's almost like cheat. It feels like cheating, but it's not. Or it might be cheating, but it's kind of like tracing and art, you know. It, it does, is it cheating, you know, because you're still making art at the end of it. But as long as it was working to tell your story, then I say, go for it. Okay, so this technique is how to make walk cycles completely procedural and have it walk over any surface you like, no matter how bumpy or weird it is. Um, although, fair warning, I haven't got it perfected yet. Please use this as a, as a rough guide uh, because it's still very much a work in process. When you analyze walking, you'll notice that the walk cycle is very much in a, in a D shape, rotated 90 degrees. So you can replicate this by using a curve. Add a circle in your, into your Blender scene, rotate it 90 degrees, and then in edit mode, change it to a D cycle by just, you know, pressing G to grab, slide, extrude, and everything. Make sure it looks like a D. Go into edit mode, delete the main control bones on the feet, go into pose mode, select your IK bone, and then go up to IK and select hook to new empty. This will create an empty, which you can then add the constraint follow path in the constraints tab. Set the path to be the D that you just created. Select the inverse, then keyframe it till you've got a basic walking cycle. You can then tweak the walking cycle in the edit mode of the D. Once you've got your basic keyframes of the thing moving up and down, you can go into the timeline, go Shift to E and select Make Cyclic, which will create the thing moving on and on forever. And to go one step further, you can then select the D itself, then go into its constraints and then select Shrink Wrap and then select the target to be the floor plane. This means that it will then be unable to pass underneath the plane and so you can move the plane, displace it, move it however you want and it will still always stick to that. It's a really useful technique and I've actually used it in a previous video with a crab to create a completely procedural crab walking. It worked brilliantly in the crab walking thing, although it's not working quite so well in the terror bird despite my best efforts. Although hopefully this should inspire you to do better than me and actually do it well. I'm really sorry if I haven't explained this all too well because doing a tutorial about animation is difficult because it's very much practice. It, it's not something, I can't give you this one secret tip and it will all be done for you. You need to actually spend time practicing and I'm afraid that's the only thing. I'm not a brilliant animator. I've only been animating for a few months really. Um, but I find that it's the more you do and the more you look at real things, look at reference, the easier it becomes. So please just go out there, look at some chickens and start animating some terror birds. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So thank you very much for watching and have a smashing day.